Steve Alcorn's a fine investigator. Oh, fuck off. This is the Bordy and Slip with your host, Chris York. I don't I don't need porn, Chris. I have a good woman. Listen, I have a I well. have a good woman. I still watch porn. Co-host, Steve Alcorn. You are the top shit in Bigfootery if you get the invitation. Oh, are I've you? I've gotten the invitation two years in a row now, Chris. Wow, not me. And sometimes special guest, Matt Knapp. It's part grown older, you know? Maturing, maturing. Uh, uh, uh. Gives me more <laughs> dignified and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, George Washington. <laughs> I opted for the... Uh, Is that what meth addicts say? <laughs> make me more dignified <laughs> taking on all things strange since 2013 wait a minute I don't know what the hell we're are you about. saying that he's pregnant possibly was he implanted by one of these teenage aliens <laughs> did that happen to Arnold uh, this di device which comes as part of Nintendo's quality of life initiative is to He's gonna have Quality kids running around banging their heads off bricks. <laughs> yeah. Good evening and welcome to the Fortean Slip. This is uh is this episode eighty-five? Okay. Or eighty-four. No, I don't know. 84? 85. Sure. Anyway, okay. this is the uh, Tell Me Lies, Tell Me Sweet Little Lies episode. Uh, couple of we a couple of weeks ago, uh, we will not be joined by uh, special guest Matt Knapp this evening. He's busy um, trying to sell things on the black market. He found the Silk Road. Nice. Yes. I tried it. I tried that. It, yeah. Wasn't very silky. He he told me he had to take some pictures of something he was going to sell. I just figured black market Silk Road, eh, works for me. <clears throat> but a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was up late, uh, as I usually am, uh, headed headed to bed to do my normal uh, ancient aliens fall asleep bit, which has been going on for quite a while now. Uh, I need to get a new season I've watched through the first three ad nauseum so uh, <laughs> by the way though I did find an interesting thing I want to talk about at some point in the third season nice. um, Good. the I don't know if you've heard of this one the uh, the spacecraft crash in Texas the Aurora yes crash yes yes I've heard of that one and we've never talked about that and uh, I was watching it, and I was like, oh, "This is fucking something we should probably touch on at some point." But anyway, I've I I've done a lot of study into that one, so I know a little bit. I digress, Steve. You do always because I didn't make it to Ancient Aliens that night. Because, as will happen sometimes when I go upstairs to sit down and mm. watch some TV, I clicked on Netflix, and. Netflix is worse sometimes than the TV Guide channel when that came out. I would fucking uh. pop on the TV Guide channel to see what the fuck was on. And I would spend more time like just sitting there watching it fucking roll and paying attention to the shit up top that they started playing because they couldn't just give us the goddamn TV Guide. Uh, but the same thing happens to me with Netflix. I sit there and I'll fucking just... I'll flick through fucking the lists and just look and look and look and look and look. And this night, I'd been seeing this documentary that had popped on Netflix, and I had been interested in it. <clears throat> and I, I fucking bit the bullet and said, fuck it. Because I'd been interested in The Amazing Randy to begin with. And the, the documentary that I'm talking about, we talked about last week on the show, is An Honest Liar. And for anybody who doesn't know who... James Randi, the amazing Randy is. He was a stage magician. Uh, I, 
you just watched the documentary, Steve. Do you remember mm-hmm. when he started? Gosh, he was 17 years old, so that had to have been... I mean, what, what's he in his 90s now? He's got to be. 80s or 90s, yeah. He's, yeah, so... He's up there. I'd say back in the 30s or 40s he started. But his whole thing was he wanted to be better than Houdini. And one of the things that I liked that they said about the amazing Randy in relationship to Houdini was the difference between Randy and Houdini was that if somebody figured out his trick, Houdini would take him out back and beat the shit out of him. Yeah, that, that was one of the best parts of the fucking documentary. <laughs> or if, if uh, And so, Randy would Houdini, just try to do it better. Right. Houdini would uh, say, you know, he could get out of anything. And if somebody brought something they couldn't get out of, he just had his guys beat the fuck out of him. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking great shit. But he wanted to be better than Houdini. He wanted to do everything better than Houdini, faster than Houdini, more extravagant than Houdini. And he wound up, uh, what was it, dislocating his uh, a vertebrae while he was trying to get out of a, a sealed container. Yeah, the milk can trick, the yeah. famous Houdini milk can trick. Yeah. And the, the other thing that fascinated me about him was when that happened, and he, he was talking about it, he said... You know, I knew I was screwed and that if I, if I, you know, overreacted, if I started, you know, freaking out that I was going to die. So I just sat yeah, back was, down into the water. Yeah, he was sealed in a, well, anybody who's familiar with Houdini at all knows about the milk can trick. You know, he gets sealed in this milk can, completely submerged in water and he got stuck in there and his fucking, I guess he two vertebrae he bought there's you know snap two vertebrae and luckily you know he didn't panic because if he had we wouldn't you know we wouldn't have the james randy that we have now but and that was pretty much what ended his career as a stage magician you know he still pretty he, much. he would still do things you know on a smaller scale but he was an amazing uh, just an amazing stage magician mm-hmm. and you know a, a definite showman but what happened with randy was he decided at at some point in his life that uh, having the powers to be able to deceive people and not telling them about it was a to him it was morally wrong like if you were going to deceive people as using the parlor tricks or the illusions that he would use or magicians would use he felt it was your duty to tell the people that you were lying to them, that you were bullshitting them, that it was all a fucking trick. Like, and the magic was that you could pull it off. Right. His opening line was, I'm a liar, cheater, you know, I'm going to deceive you. Basically, when he came out on stage, that's what he told you. I'm going to deceive you. Yes. And he he took umbrage with people who didn't do that. And... Right. And that's where the meat and potatoes of this whole idea of why I wanted to do this show is he started going after hoaxers. And the first person that, the first people that he went after were these channelers. Mm-hmm. And I, I loved how he went after them. He just created a guy, made him a channeler, <laughs> told him what to say, like made him into this big, huge fucking thing, and then said, that's all fake. <laughs> it's all it's all hoax. But people were fucking totally buying this. I I love the, the amazing Carlos. Name. Yeah, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> I am this ancient spirit named Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so he goes after these people, and you know it just you know whatever because I, I guess. You can't really disprove that. Like, these people are just saying innocuous bullshit. They're not, like, predicting the future. They're not healing people or doing anything. They were just being assholes, really. You know, obviously. But the one that he went after that kind of made him famous as far as for going after him was Yuri Geller. Right. And fucking anybody who doesn't know who Yuri Geller is... I believe he's a, 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 a Iraqi-born or Iranian-born. Uh, I don't remember. One of the two. 
It's one of those two countries. I'm sorry if that offends people that I don't know which it was. I apologize. He was Middle Eastern. He was Let's Middle Eastern. Let's just say he was Middle yeah, Eastern. Yeah, he's a Middle Eastern or guy. Or still is, in fact. Yes. Um, and he was the famous uh, spoon-bending dude, the mentalist. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I've talked about Yuri Geller on the show before. He's what literally got me into all the 40 and topics. That's when I was a kid. It was Yuri Geller. I seen him on TV, and he was bending spoons with his mind and shit like that. To me, that was amazing shit, you know. But so it was all that's just what got me shit, <laughs> right? But I didn't know that at eight years old or nine years old or whatever the hell I was, you know. So that's what got me started in looking into the subjects of, you know, is this sort of thing possible? Yeah, and I, I mean, actually, I had uh, I had Yuri remembered Gallen. I had remembered hearing about him helping Carson to screw over Geller when he was trying to do his trick on the Carson show. And, you know, they did make it so that he could not do his trick. And it it got very uncomfortable. I was watching that, and I couldn't believe Carson was smoking on air. Yeah, I know. That was, that was pretty cool. I was just like, what the fuck? I'm, like, looking at the screen going, oh, my God, yeah, that used to happen. <laughs> but, you know... And it happened it, a lot. Yeah. It, it was obvious when they showed that video when they came back from the break because Geller was like, you know, I need a minute, you know, I've, I've got to, you know, something's not right. You know, so I'm not getting, I'm not getting it. Whatever the fuck he was saying. <clears throat> they come back and the fucking tension, like fucking, you could tell Carson was just like fucking egging him on, <laughs> you know, as it was very obvious that Carson wanted to do this to him. He was known for that anyway. Well, um, it's kind of funny to me that Carson had Yuri Geller on. And then behind, basically, I mean, you have to think it was behind Yuri Geller's back. He contacted James Randi because he knew James Randi had a thing against or with Yuri Geller, you know. Oh, absolutely. So he contacts James Randi, and James Randi tells the prop guys, this is how you set it up so he can't do the trick. You know, and, and they didn't do anything out of the ordinary, they put a little bit of rubber cement in the bottom of these little containers so that he couldn't see which one had the ball in it when he moves them around. That's right. all it was. It's it, it was a simple thing of making it so that the that when he when he would move the tray or whatever they were on around, that's how he would tell which one contained the ball because he could tell by how but they I, moved. I remember the disappointment that I had as a child hearing that. Uh, Yuri Geller was busted on Carson, you know, because I loved Carson and I loved Yuri Geller. And then you put those two things together and I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh. I didn't say fuck, but. It, it, it was, it, I don't remember it happening. Um, oh, how, I do. However, watching that, and I remember hearing about it, you know, uh, and after the fact, I remember hearing about the Carson thing. Uh, Because I I, I was a bit young at that time. So, but then after that, and I'll go into the aftermath afterwards. But but after that, he goes after this televangelist. And I can't remember the fucking dude's name. Peter Popoff. Peter Popoff. And this motherfucker had had a setup where his wife would would talk to him in his ear. He was a faith healer. And she would talk to him in his ear. They would get all the information from all these people when they would come in. And she would point out to him who in the crowd he needed to to grab, what their names were, what their addresses were. So he seemed like this amazing fucking visionary, this, this channeler of the Almighty himself just totally fucking these people over completely lying to them and you know they they figured it out they went in and he got a private investigator to tap into the uh the frequency that they were using which the guy that did it said it would be a hard fucking thing to do and they still managed to do it and you know they caught him and then and totally outed him about it about what happened and this is where I go back to the Yuri Geller thing. 
because this is what fascinated me about this documentary kind of more than anything else about it. Nothing happened to these fucking people. Yuri Geller... Popoff Popoff declared bankruptcy after that. But but he's he's still going. (laughs) He he went right back to it. So yep. after a while, yeah, it's same with Geller, and and Geller's was right back into it. Now he sells mystical jewelry on QVC. <laughs> well, he went for a while, and I remember he was on Regis and Kathy Lee, and I remember seeing that I'm oh fuck, Yuri Geller's back because I had remembered him from when I was a kid, and he's on Regis because I I loved watching Regis and Kathy Lee. Why I don't know. But when I was, you know, a young adult, and he on, or whatever that was. <laughs> anyway, so he's hawking this, I can find gold and silver and precious metals with my mind bullshit at that time. And of course, by that time, I knew that he was a fraud. But yet, he still get TV appearances, you know? And, the, and, 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 the, and that is indicative, though, Steve. I mean, think about it. Think about the hoaxers that we've known or that we've watched. How many of them go away? How many of them Some do. really, really go away, though? Like the diehards, the people who are fucking definitely, you know, y- you don't see them go away. Well, fuck, Yuri Geller's got to be in his 70s now, and he's still saying, hey, this is all real. This is what I do. I'm, I, I'm a real psychic or a real whatever he calls himself now, you know, so they don't go away. No, they because just, then that would be they just find another <laughs> avenue. Right. That's all they do. They find another avenue and they keep going on. So what what it kind of amazed me about it is, you know, yeah, I guess Randy got the satisfaction of pulling their pants down. But they just pulled him right back up and kept walking on. <clears throat> the thing that got me the most is when, you know, he busted Yuri Geller on Carson. And then there was this like thing going on between him and Yuri Geller and Yuri Geller would show up on a show and then Randy would show up and debunk him well when they got the the Barbara Walters one the look on her face when fucking Randy busted the hoax on her show was like utter disappointment yeah like she wanted to believe that so bad and she's like I mean she's like utterly disappointed the power then, of I remember, belief is amazing Right. I remember the the one guy, he was on some talk show and, you know, people in the audience were uh, questioning or, or talking back and forth with him like they do on those shows. And he, the one guy's like, well, to believe in this, you have to actually believe in it first and then it will happen. Well, duh. <laughs> You yeah, know, that yeah that's, that's exactly, thing. exactly right, Steve. If you go into the woods thinking you're going to find Bigfoot... <laughs> Basically, and that's and that guy was using that as a defense. You have to believe that this stuff is real first, and Randy didn't believe it was real, according to this guy. Well, if you go in believing it was real, you're going to find what you're looking for. And that's I, I think that's why people fault for this shit so much, because they want to believe so badly. I'm I mean, we've re- seen I'm reminded, it time and time again. I'm reminded, and I'm reminded of this a lot of a book that I read a while ago um, called Wizard's First Rule. And it's a fantasy novel, great novel, by uh, a guy named Terry Goodkind. <clears throat> a horrible Good ending. Goodkind? Yes, no. Um, a horrible ending to the series, as far as I'm concerned, uh, or, or that stretch of the series. But anyway, great, great book. Um, but in that book, this gentleman, Richard, is learning about how to be a wizard and so on and so forth. And the f- the wizard's first rule is that people are stupid mm-hmm. and it stuck with me because it the the reason that is the first rule is because you can pull shit over on people and make them think you're a wizard even though you have magic like in this world they did but the first rule was that generally people are stupid right <laughs> and i hate to say that about the human race because I'm a fucking part of it. But all, all in all, we're a very gullible people. And if 
you want any indication of that, look at any viral video that's obviously bullshit. People will eat that shit up. I actually have a top 10 video I want to post on the blog, and I've held off on it because I know I'm going to take shit for it. And I want to post it as this is an example of horse shit because it is just a top 10 of fucking weird creature sightings. And it's all those fucking dumb ones like the the spider-like thing crawling on the apartment building in Russia or, you know, all these other fucking things that are just obviously fucking horse shit. And people just buy right into him. The teleporting man that saves the man on the street. Really? Really? Which which has been debunked so many times. And <laughs> but people, people still want to believe so badly. I saw someone post that the other day in a group. And I watched people kick people out of the group because they didn't believe in it. Yeah. How fucking Absolutely. crazy is that? That an obvious video that has been debunked many, many times, people are still posting as the real fucking deal. And I've, I took a lot of shit recently, too, for posting, you know, just horse shit on the blog. Uh, you know, por- posting a bunch of shit. Listen, I post whatever on that fucking blog. And then I come on this show and I say, hey, guess what? I think that 99% of it's bullshit. So... How am I fucking pulling the wool over anybody's eyes? I'm not. I'm coming out and honestly saying that, you know, it's basically an aggregation of stories that interest you and your readers. Yeah. And it's not necessarily what you believe to be true, but, you know, but it's just all along those lines. But because we call out bullshit on this show and horse shit on this show. Uh, if we post something that somebody else thinks is horseshit or that thinks we should think is horseshit, then we're going to get horseshit for it. Yeah. I, and, 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 and James and, Randi got the same thing, you know. And I get that. And I get that from people. But listen, you know, for those of you who want to take the time to fucking listen, because most, most people don't. Most people are fucking idiots. I, 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 I love the fact that I posted a story about a hunter seeing two Bigfoot mating. And I put a picture in the video of two gorillas that look like they're fucking. And they're not, but they look like they are. And I even put a disclaimer on the video. There's a big fucking note in big letters that says, yes, I'm well aware that this is a fucking picture of gorillas. I didn't have a picture of a Bigfoot fucking another Bigfoot to post. And people still comment on that video and say, it's fucking gorillas. Yeah, and it's because they don't, they either don't listen. If it's a blog article, they only read what they want to read from it, usually just the headline. Uh, you know, there's a big, famous Bigfoot blog out there that people don't read any of it. They just go there to make comments, you know, on whatever story it is, but they don't read it. And, I've done a test on my blog where I just put bullshit in the middle of it and nobody ever saw it Yeah, because that's people want to see what they want to see. And that goes back to all this Yuri Geller and, you know, Peter Popoff and all these fucking mediums and psychics and bullshit because it's too easy. And they were able to fool science, you know, because that even the scientists wanted to believe so bad. That you they know, allowed the rules. Guys they allowed the rules to be broken. They were given right. and rules, they did it and, and they still fucking broke them. James Randi sent two guys in there <laughs> to see if they could do this. Project Alpha, I think they called it. Yeah. He gave them the rules to follow to say, "Here's what you do, so that these guys can't fool you." And they still didn't listen. And this is supposed to be a scientific study. And the reason they did it is because Yuri Geller had a scientific study and allegedly it proved that he was a real psychic and all this bullshit. And so, you know, James Randi said, hey, let's try it ourselves. And guess what? They He and, pulled the wool over the scientists. And they, and they put them on for a long time, too. Like that went on. Years, yeah, think. that went on for a long time. And the two gentlemen that were a part of that, I can't remember their names. They're two... 
they they're I I believe they're both still mentalists, you know, uh performing mentalists. The one the one is. I think the other one's an executive in some big company oh, okay. in Texas, I believe. Uh, but the they, other one still is a mentalist. But they both left that study feeling like they just fucked people over. They just Well, because they yeah, there was a documentary documentary guy came in from the BBC and he believed he was a skeptic at first and then they got him to believe that they were real and so he wanted to do this documentary but he actually followed the rules that James Randi gave them and because he followed the rules they couldn't do anything and then he was so pissed off he went like mental yeah. <laughs> because he couldn't get him to do that because he now he's a believer he wanted to believe so bad that now that he can't get him to do it, you know. And that's the power of belief. And then he blamed James Randi. He said, because you gave me all these rules. <laughs> well, <duh. laughs> yeah, you dumb fuck. <laughs> this is what we're supposed to be proving here. Everybody knew what James Randi was about. He had no bones about it. I mean, he's I bust hoaxes. I'm lying to you when I'm doing these tricks. This is not real. It's just an illusion. But yet, people still wanted to believe so badly, even when he gave them the rules to bust a hoax, they still wanted to believe it, that it was real. Yeah, and they just, they, they fucking went with it. Yeah, and, it, and we see it all the time. I mean, UFOs, I mean, fucking that Roswell thing, that's still going on. People still believe that. Uh, not, the, not the Roswell crash, but that uh, mummified alien, whatever the fuck it was. The Roswell you know, people slides. People still yeah, people are still debating that. Uh, we got uh, dead Bigfoots all over the fucking place. People still want to believe that they actually happened. Oh, yeah. Fucking, no fucking I'm, I'm just waiting for Rick Dyer to haul another fucking goddamn Bigfoot out of his closet. Here's the one difference between Rick Dyer and every other Bigfoot hoaxer there is. Like James Randi, he comes right out and tells you he's full of bullshit. Now, I'm not giving him any credit because he's a dick, but, and I'm a weasel, apparently. You but are a weasel. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, at least, at the very least, he's telling you, I'm pulling the wool over your eyes, but you're still going to believe that I did something. Every you know? single fucking so, time he pulls something, it's big news. Every fucking time. I c I, and he knows it. He knows the formula to do it. Yep. Just like James Randi knew the formula, just like Yuri Geller knew the formula. You know, these people know the fucking formula. Now, James Randi went about it in an honest way as far as when he was busting these hoaxes. These other people don't necessarily do that. And, and for the record, you know, the whole documentary, if anybody decides to watch it, it's kind of about the fact that while James Randi was this guy who went around and helped to point out people who were deceiving people he was a great deceiver himself right in that you know he helped a man uh get into this country and without a you know <clears throat> without any citizenship uh it was his partner he was he's or is a gay man um and i did not know that about and James did Randy. not come That's... out until the 2000s i want to say was when he came out yeah. not that long ago, or maybe the... I can't remember when it said exactly, but it hasn't been for very long that he's been out of the closet. <clears throat> and, you know, he basically, you know, pulled this deception about this guy that he was living with, you know, a completely different name than what it was, you know, called him by a different mm -hmm. name than his actual name, just to keep up this deception. And they, try, they were going to deport him. And... Yep. It wound up that they didn't, you know, he was allowed to, you know, have time served and all that. And they were able to get married afterwards. But the whole idea that this man was going around and trying to, you know, make it so that people couldn't deceive people. And yet he was deceiving people for so very long about this 25 thing. years, I think. And, 25 years. And, you know, his his whole reasoning, you know, hey, I, I love the man and I didn't want him to suffer and I want, you know, he had his reasons. That's fine. But I thought it was amazing, you know, a, a dichotomy to a man. Right. But here's the thing. James Randi was all about uh, 
people making money off of what he was doing in a dishonest manner. So right. like psychics and Jerry Geller, those kind of people. Now, did Call James Randy make any money? Call me now for your free reading, Steve. <laughs> did James Randy make any money off of the deception of his, you know, his partner? No. So it is a little bit different. And I understand exactly why he did it, because his partner was from Venezuela and back in those days, and probably even a, a lot still today, being a gay man in certain places is not a very good thing to be. And so, you know, uh, people get killed over that shit. So that's why the guy there changed are, his There are still people out there who do not like the gay, Steve. There are a lot of people. In fact, <laughs> I work with several of them. So, I, 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 Growing yeah. up, I was, and now, you know, because I'm a very tolerant person, and I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck what anybody does. You know, like I've said before on this show, I've had a dick in my mouth once. It's like, fucking, you know, whatever. It was fucking experimental. I, I have nothing uh, against any of these, you know, anybody who wants to have any type of sexual relationship or loving relationship that they want to have. They're adults. That's fine. But there are still whatever. places in this fucking world... That are that have not stepped out of my childhood, because holy fuck, when I was young, it was atrocious to be gay. Everyone well, I uh, knew was against it. I recently went back and listened. I have all the tapes of all the because I went. I grew up in church. I have all the tapes from the sermons that the pastor did, and I love the man to death. He was a great guy, a great pastor. You know, he did did a good job with the church and just a great guy all around. But I listened to this one sermon and it was about homosexuality and I about fucking lost it. It was so bad how, you know, it was like the worst sin you could commit and you're going straight to hell if you're, you can't be forgiven and all this bullshit. And I'm like, I grew up in that, you know, I'm going straight to hell, Steve. Well, it, it's the <laughs> fact that, you know, you just take it at face value when you are in that situation. And so, and like all these hoaxes and stuff, you take them at face value because, well, he seems like a trustworthy guy, you know, that kind of thing. And so even some of the greatest people in the world have these kind of crazy ideas. And that that's where I'm going with that. So Yeah, and like I said, it was just a, it was an interesting dichotomy to a guy to know that, he, you know, he himself had this big deception, and I completely understand anyone who was gay who tried to hide the fact that they were gay. You know, back oh, geez, yeah. back in the day, I don't fucking have any issue with anybody. Like, I knew a bunch of people that I was always like questionable, and then later on, I was like, oh yeah, they're gay. Oh, no, yeah, well, that's mm -hmm. why. That's why he lives with Bob. Well, that's why <laughs> she lives with Norma. Uh, you know, we had a gym teacher. She was. Uh, it was so obvious in retrospect, but, you know, back when I was a kid, I was like, huh, why does she live with her friend? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but hey, it, but it, 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 like I said, it was just an interesting dichotomy to a guy who wanted to call out people for their deceptions, but yet he had this great deception. <clears throat> but I think the thing that resonated with me most about the whole thing and what I was trying to relate was that while he went after these people and while you know we will go after people for shit it doesn't fucking really change anything not a damn thing because yuri geller's still doing his thing popoff's still doing mm -hmm. his fucking thing mm -hmm. uh, channelers are still out there fucking telling people that they're talking to fucking angels you know mm -hmm. um or or whatever you know it is and am i completely saying that no one on this planet can talk to a fucking angel no I don't know that for fact, but in my opinion, probably most of them are bullshit. I, I had the discussion with my girlfriend today about, you know, the faith healer thing. And I said, is it possible? I guess it is. But is Peter Popoff doing it? Fuck no. Is any of these people on TV who claim to be the faith healers doing it? Probably not. So is it possible? Sure. Um, I grew up in that kind of church, you know, where there was faith healing and things like that. And 
who am I to say that some of that didn't happen? Did your pastor touch was, the frog on the floor? No. Oh, okay. But, you know, a lot like what Peter Popoff did, you know, we would bring those kinds of people into the church and, you know, and people eat that shit up. Oh, yeah. And I remember, and I was talking to my girlfriend earlier, and I said, you know, when I was a young man and I went to college, I went to a Christian college, a lot of people know that. Um, when I first got down there, there was this big Christian singer back in the day, and I think he still sings, but I don't know. His name was Carmen. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Probably nobody has. But um, anyway, he'd give out free concerts. And I was in Springfield, Missouri, which is like the biggest, you know, churchy place in the world. And we went to this concert and I'm standing outside because you had to wait in line for a day. You know, it was one of those kind and about 10 people up for me, this lady's on crutches. And then all of a sudden all these people gather around her and start praying and shit. And then she throws her crutches away and she's running around the parking lot. And, and she as had a just bought young, those crutches on the way. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Because, and I went up and talked to the lady afterwards. I'm like, really? I mean, that was amazing. And now I'm thinking to myself, you know, years later, I think I was a, 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 probably deceived that day. And I'm thinking, what better way to promote your concert while all these people are standing outside in line waiting to get in than to have a, you know, because you're a Christian concert, you know. The guy didn't do it himself, but out in the parking lot, people are getting healed. You know, that kind of thing. So, it was a little bit of deception, I think, going on there that day, and that's how I have to look at it. Yeah, I've never, I've never experienced anything like that. My, my church going experiences this. were uh, short lived when I was a child. Um, I can tell you, when you're in that moment, you're, when you grew up that way, when you're in that moment, you're buying into all this stuff. I mean, it's not like there's any option other than what's going on you know because you see it oh my god it must be real my parents believe it my grandparents believe it this is what i learned in church you know now that i'm older and i look back on the situation maybe not so much you know yeah it it, it never it was never big in my life i mean my mom was big into christianity when i was really young and she is now again um but there was a whole period, like, it was when I was real young, and then it stopped, and then it didn't pick up until I was an adult, like, way later in life. So I, I, I only had that little bit. My grandmother was really big into her religion, and that gets shoved down my throat quite a bit um, as I was getting older. Now, I have, I have nothing against people who believe that this stuff happens. You know, I don't happen to believe it anymore. I think it's more you know, the power of the mind can do things than anything, more than anything, more than a faith healer can. God doesn't, if there is a God, which I don't know, but if there is one, is he going to appoint fucking Peter Popoff to heal people? Fuck no. Listen, first of all, if he was going to appoint somebody, it wouldn't be a dude with the initials PP. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. I like, mean, if is, I was the God divine really? creator, I wouldn't go with PP. But yet, people want to believe it so desperately that even though Peter Popoff was busted, clearly busted, he's back, and people are still buying into him. Yep. You know, because it's okay. Oh, all, I've, all, I've is, all is forgiven, I'm... Steve. All is forgiven. Right. <laughs> And I still want to believe Yuri Geller can bend fucking spoons. He can't, but I know Steve. better. I know better now. No, really. He, I he sat can't. up for fucking hours and hours at night in my bedroom with a spoon in my hand <laughs> trying to bend that motherfucker <laughs> because of Yuri Geller. And that's, like I said, well, I did. And that's where I got started into the Fordian subjects. And I got into Bigfoot and UFOs and all that shit because of Yuri Geller. So I guess I owe him something, but he wasn't, you know, what he turned out to be. But that didn't matter to me after he was busted. I mean, it was a big disappointment, but it's what started me on my quest, you know, to, to learn whether this stuff really does happen or not. And then, and then you found out the horrid truth. 
And so far, I haven't found one instance of psychic ability or even Bigfoot, for, for that matter, or UFOs that actually can be proven to exist. Do I still want to believe they exist? Absolutely. But... Oh, we're definitely we're definitely a show of uh, we we want to believe. Like I fucking I I I equate myself to Fox Mulder with my fucking with his little poster on the wall. Like I definitely want to fucking believe shit, but I'll tell you you know, we we talked last week about how we've almost been doing this for 2 years now. In 2 years time. I've gotten that you know this jaded that I started out at ninety percent of its bullshit and it just kept moving up and up and up. It just, I just want one. I just want one thing: a psychic ability or a proof of Bigfoot, one alien, uh, anything. You might not one, want the one alien, one. Steve. I've seen Predator. I'm just saying. <laughs> I am of the impression that our minds are powerful things and can do certain things that, you know, we don't think we really have the ability to do. So is it possible that this stuff can happen? I still want to say yes. But yet, there's no proof ever. Not a single bit of it. James Randi has the million dollar challenge and it has gone unaccepted for as long as he's had it up yeah and i'm i'm a person who has you know admittedly on this show or on a, a other podcasts that i do on this channel i've said you know, i've had experiences that are very interesting where i saw things or right. seemed to see things before they happen now have i ever quantified or qualified myself as a psychic no i'll be the first one to tell you that i don't know what to think about those experiences I question them because mm -hmm. there's no proof. There's no proof that I ever had those that those dreams. There's no proof that I ever had that vision before the incident happened. I don't have any of that. I can't give anybody that. So what am I going to say? This is what happened to me. You know, I, what is it? I don't fucking know. Do I consider myself, you know, a clairvoyant or a psychic? No. I don't. I don't sit around and fucking see the future. If I did, I fucking would be better off than I am right now. I think just about everybody would. I have to go back to when you remember when Princess Diana died and all that shit. Oh, yeah. Well, they interviewed her psychic. Oh, of course after, they did. Because, you know, and you know what her psychic So They asked her a question. Well, why didn't you tell her she was going to die? She goes, well, I'm a positive psychic. I don't tell people bad news. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, how, how are you, you supposed know? to prepare them? Come on now. And how much money do you think Princess Diana or Nancy Reagan had a psychic? You know, all these people, all these famous people do this shit. How much money do you think these people make? Well, obviously, it's profitable to deceive people, you know? Yeah, and it, it, when, they, when, when they said that they couldn't, you couldn't charge money for it, they just went to donations. Right. <laughs> it's fucking, it's hilarious. The whole fucking thing's hilarious. Well, you, you know, like people like Peter Popoff, they, get, they got the racket, man. You're not giving it to them. You're giving it to God. Yeah. Right? That's right. Pass that yet, collection plate Peter around, Popoff people. Popoff has a $10 million fucking home, prop, you know, or oh, whatever. I, I, and... I, love, I love the fucking posts that people post around Facebook all the time about Joel Olstein. It's that fucking picture of his house, and it says fucking Jesus died on the cross so that Joel Olstein could have this $10 million house. Now, I do. I am familiar a little bit with Joel Olstein because he was really popular back when I was still in, you know, high school when I was still going to church. And, you know, at, at, in the beginning, I mean, I read some of his books and shit and listened to a few of his lectures, and he was pretty good. But nowadays, it's just about the money, you know? Yeah, it, 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 I get, if, I think it always if, winds up being about the fucking money. If you, if you are making that much money that you can afford that kind of thing, but you're supposedly a man of God and you're preaching like a prosperity doctrine, which 
you know, you just believe and it'll happen and whatever, then why aren't you making it happen? Why aren't you giving some of this money to people who really need it instead of fucking hogging it all for yourself? You know what I mean? Why do you need and a so, $10 million home? I think why that's, do you need a $1 million? I think that's the question everybody should be asking. Why do you need a $10 million home? When kids are starving no. in the world, why do you need a $10 million home? If you are this great philanthropist, this amazing fucking religious man, this man of God, why? Why? And it's not just do Joe Olstein. It's any, any preacher or any politician or any person in that has that kind of money who pre preaches that they are a person who gives and whatever you know if you have that and i have nothing not me personally but you know what i mean then you're not doing the right thing yeah i I, I see a lot of that and it disgusts me and it disgusts me because i grew up watching people who were blinded by that shit, who sent money to those fucking people. And all the while they did it, they, you know, bashed gay people and black people <laughs> and fucking everybody else. They, it, but I, yet I, claimed to be persecuted themselves. Yes, and I just found it to be such a, hip, a, a, a bag of hypocrisy that I couldn't deal with it. No, I grew up, I grew up in church. Uh, I went to school. Everybody at school knew that I went to church, and I never heard what I got picked on. Trust me, I got picked on, but not because of that. I was never once persecuted because I believed in God, you know? So it's just a big line of bullshit. Yeah, and it, it, I, it makes. I, I was more persecuted. I'm sorry, we're getting off on a tangent. Uh, no, that's fine. I was more persecuted by people who were my family members who were Christians when I didn't want to be a Christian. I Same here. It, it was... And, and not my family members, but former church people who knew me, and I still get it. I still... Well, you need to be going to church. No, I don't. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to hang out with you. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to hang out with you to be close to God. Um, you know, and, and for anybody There's who wants guy. to, and, and for anybody who wants to believe that, you know, I just sit around and trash fucking religion and I don't <clears throat> believe in anything. I do, you know, I, I definitely believe in a higher power, but I don't know what it is and I don't have any answers for anyone. So I'm not going to sit around and act like I do. See, now I, I'm kind of the, I don't know what to fucking believe anymore. And the thing is. If there isn't a higher power, there isn't a higher power. There's nothing, not a damn thing I can do about it. So why should I sit around and worry about whether I'm going to go to heaven or hell or not if it doesn't even exist? You know, because I don't know. Yeah, and it, it's... So it, I'm just going to live my life the way I want to live it. And if it's good enough and there is a heaven, I'll go. If it's not good enough and there's a hell, that's where I'll go. Yeah, I, 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 I stopped, like, worrying about the shit. A while ago, I think, for a long time, I, I was conflicted about you know who I was and what my belief structure was in comparison to what it should be or or whatnot. And I, I don't anymore. I'm a I'm a firm believer in personal belief and in personal <clears throat> religion. Um, I don't think that people need to congregate together to to share their faith if they want to. That's fine. I don't think that they have to. Yeah. Um. That's my own personal belief, but you know, it it whenever you go down these roads, religion is a it's it's a fucking horrid subject. It's not, and it's not that it's a horrid subject. It's just you're almost guaranteed to piss someone off if you talk about it. Absolutely. And it's the same thing with politics. It's the same thing with a little, uh, anything, really. Um, Pretty much at this point, because you could fucking piss anybody off. And then you got to be on the apology train. Which, by the way, ladies well, and like, gentlemen, I will never apologize for anything I say on this fucking program unless I firmly believe I need to apologize for it. So if you ever hear an apology out of me, you'll know goddamn well it's fucking sincere. 
I, I agree, and I'm the same way. If I say it on the air, I meant to say it, and that's what I meant, you know? And the stuff that we say on this show is our fucking opinions, so fuck all of you. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Absolutely. You getting news, Steve? I don't know. Okay. From the independent.co.uk. Was William Shakespeare high when he penned his plays? Yeah, damn <clears> skippy <throat> he was. I've read A Midsummer Night's Dream. I haven't. <laughs> uh, of course not. Of course I haven't. Uh, pipes with cannabis residue uh, were found in the Bard's Garden. Nice. Uh, state-of-the-art forensic technology from South Africa, because that's where all state-of-the-art technology comes Fucking from. Fucking right it does. <laughs> has been used to try to unravel the mystery of what what, uh, what was smoked in tobacco pipes found in the Stratford-upon-Avon Garden of William Shakespeare. Uh, residue from clay tobacco pipes more than 400 years old uh, from the playwright's garden were analyzed in Pretoria using a sophisticated technique called gas chromatography, mass spectrometry. And I got it all right. Mm. Chemicals from... Nice. Uh, chemicals from pipe bowls and stems which had been excavated from Shakespeare's garden and adjacent areas were identified and quantified during the forensic study. The artifacts for the study were on loan from the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust. Uh, the gas technique is very sensitive to residue that can be preserved in pipes even if they've been smoked 400 years ago. Woo so what were they smoking? Uh, there were several kinds of tobacco in the 17th century including the North American nicotina, basically normal nicotine cigarettes, uh, cocaine, and which was obtained from per Peruvian cocoa leaves at the time. Uh, it has been claimed that Sir uh, Francis Drake may have bought cocoa leaves, or brought cocoa leaves to England after his visit to Peru, just as Sir Walter Raleigh had brought tobacco leaves from uh, Virginia in North America. It, in a recent we issue... We like our stimulants, of, Steve. I sure do. In a recent issue of a Country Life magazine, Mark Griffiths has uh, stimulated great interest in John Gerard's Herbal, published in 19, 1597, excuse me. A, I am lost. You that are lost. a botanical book. I always get lost, Chris. Which includes engraved images of several people in the frontispiece. One of them, cited as the fourth man, is identified by Griffiths as William Shakespeare. But this identification is questionable. So basically, I'm, old Bill Shakespeare liked to smoke some weed. Is, uh, is that what we're saying? Much I, think that's the the story. I think that's the gist of the story. They're trying to prove that. And this, if, uh, if, this, if this fucking confuses anybody or if anybody's completely like blown away by this, just go away. <laughs> well, here's the thing. They found uh, several pipes. Two of them contained cocaine, but they did not come from Shakespeare's garden. But four pipes did contain cannabis and did come from Shakespeare's garden. So it's a pretty good bet. I'm going to go with Bill was token on the fucking dope. Or, well, that's it's a pretty a, good bet. Actually, it, wait a minute. I got yeah. to rephrase that. Some people equate dope to heroin. So he was smoking the ganja, Steve. Now, this next story, Chris, kind of fits in with uh, our deal for tonight, and it's about psychic abilities. Ah. And it, there's an app for that. Did you know that? Ah, there's no. There's an app for that. There's an app to give yeah, you psychic from abilities? Yeah, Grail. Well, to test your psychic abilities, basically. Oh, oh. Uh, from the dailygrail.com. It's called Am I a Psychic app. It uses science and statistics to tell whether or not you've got psychic abilities. Uh, research into psi abilities, tele telepathy, uh, precognition, psychokinesis, etc., remains on the fringes of science, with common arguments against such ph phenomena often coming down to the unscientific nature of how people come to believe in them. Skeptics say that people often fall into the trap of selective thinking, uh, making note of the times that something strange happened to them and forgetting the many times that something strange didn't happen. Uh, the best way around such concerns is to do scientific testing, 
yay, of any suggested sciabilities. Uh, you got to follow the rules, though, tricky. Steve. Yes. Sometimes that can be a little tricky if you're on your own. Uh, enter a newly proposed mobile app, Am I a Psychic, created by a college student named Dominic Parker, who is currently seeking funds on Kickstarter to complete the project. This guy's a genius. Uh, this app is the first mobile app in the history of physical research that is actually fun to play and actually tests your ability. There has never been anything like this before in science, uh, which is what makes it so exciting and fun to be a part of. Am I a Psychic is the fruition of almost two years of planning, development, and marketing. Uh, the user can choose to play our games using either the extrasensory perception mode or the psychokinesis mode. Or the right? Sudoku mode. Each uh, <laughs> Which is my favorite, Tetris by the way. Mode. Each, uh, each, I like the Pac-Man mode. Each offers the user a different and unique approach to proving their psychic ability. The SP mode allows the user to choose between six options. Using psychic ability, the user attempts to guess the future. Uh, once the option is chosen, uh, let the PRNG do the work, and afterward, the user can check a mathematical, but not boring, uh, graph and see if they're psychic. The PK mode uh, has the user choose a time limit and one of six options, and then the user attempts to mentally influence the PRNG uh, to pick the chosen option. Once the time limit has expired, the user can view the mathematical uh, graph and both visually and scientifically see if they're, in fact, psychic. Awesome. So, no, so <laughs> people don't have to go sit in front of Peter Venkman anymore and get fucked over. No. Okay, great. But I guess uh, what they want to do with this app is collect all the data and send it into a central processing area and, you know, do it sciency like But the thing about this app is nobody's ever going to win the game. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You're playing a game to see if you're psychic, but you're not going to win. It's fucking Candy but Crush for your brain. Your psychic brain. It is pretty brain. much. Yes. Ah, and big news this week. Big, big, big Bigfoot news from WSPA.com. A new Bigfoot sighting in North Carolina after recent lizard man sightings in South Carolina. <laughs> the fucking lizard man and Bigfoot are just hanging out in the Carolinas. Well, we're, wouldn't you? I mean, come on. Maybe maybe they just like place. tobacco. Tobacco? Well, it's more, you know, like a Kentucky thing, ain't it? I guess they have it in the Carolinas, too. I don't know. I don't know either. A tourist, a tourist says he spotted a Bigfoot near Hendersonville, North Carolina, Tuesday morning. There also have been two recent sightings of the Lizard Man near Bishopville, South Carolina. Uh, Lizard Man was first spotted in Bishopville in 1988. I especially like the rubber suit years. picture. Mm, that, one, that was horrible. I'm sorry. Yes, this woman uh, posted a picture of the Lizard Man outside of church, and it's like the most horrible rubber costume you've ever seen in your fucking life it reminded me of land of the lost yes one of those costumes that's exactly what I, when i thought saw that not fucking the you know Kirk newer fights version. the gorn pretty much it, it, not the newer version of land of the lost but the old you know 60s or 70s they should so land get bill shatner to go costumes. there and fucking fight that thing that would be cool <laughs> that would be fucking great especially if the thing like ripped his toupee off <laughs> in one sighting, Jim Wilson says he was driving on Highway 34 toward Camden when he saw something that looked like the Lizard Man uh, run out into the road, run across the bridge over uh, Scape or Swamp, and then disappear into the swamp. Uh, in the other, a woman identified only as Sarah says she saw the Lizard Man outside of her church, and she took a picture. <laughs> oh, it's a great picture, honey. <laughs> Lizard Man is described as being about seven feet tall with red eyes, a tail, and scales. Well, duh. Uh, Jason Cox, executive director of the SC Cotton Museum in Bishopville, has a display of Lizard Man items, including plaster casts of the footprints that were found at the original sighting in 1988. And the footprints were found in the uh, Skateboard Swamp, so as the sheriff was doing his job, he went ahead and cast them, and those are the casting, Cox says. Uh, that's the only physical evidence of Lizard Man. Cox has a theory about why people believe in Bigfoot and or the Lizard Man. My cock uh, does like not have a theory about Bigfoot, Steve. 
Oh. His talk does, apparently. Talks. Uh, we think there are things out there that we don't understand, and there's a lot of things out there that we don't understand, he says. Maybe they're out there. When I was younger, we were all looking for the man from Planet X. We knew an alien was coming in his flying saucer, so this was, this is the magic of it all. And we need to keep our fantasies and keep our imaginations going, so I think it's great to have it. There is a website for people uh, to report Bigfoot sightings in the Carolinas and Georgia, and you can look that up somewhere on the Internet if you want to, because I don't have the link. You know, Steve... That's exactly how Richard Jennings would have uh, reported that. P- Peter Jennings? Oh, P- fucking A. God damn it. Fuck me. Horrible. Horrible. We need to just sit in my fucking utter disappointment and my ability to fucking slam on you for a second, Steve. Hey, it is what it is. God damn it. That was the news, by the way. Fuck. Peter Jennings. How the fuck did I fuck that up? Who the hell is Richard Jennings? I don't know. Oh, speaking of which, I totally forgot. Well, I didn't forget. I didn't have time to fucking put it in the soundboard. We did not forget, or I did not forget about Richard Allen's uh, bit for the week. Um, I'm going to hold off until next week because I've had a fucked up week. You know, for those of you who aren't in the know, I've been in and out of the hospital to see my father. Um, and I do plan on having that as a weekly thing uh, because I, I, I definitely enjoy <laughs> doing it. I enjoy it. I sure enjoy it. So, uh, Richard, it, it, it isn't that I uh, forgot you. I just, uh, I've had a fuck of a week. So, um, Richard's going to listen to the whole fucking show. Waiting for his little bit to come up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's well, going to get to the end and be fucking disappointed. He'll be a little disappointed, but hey, it is what it is. It happens. Oh, well. um, but he, he will have you know his regular bit on the show. So I don't want him to think that I've uh, abandoned him because I have not. Uh, he is definitely the super fan of the show. That being said, Steve, could you get me Mick West? I'd get him if I cared. Me too. This has been episode, um, I'm not sure, 84, 85, it's somewhere in there. 40 and slip. Uh, tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. If you like this shit, hit the like button. If you don't, hit the little thumbs down button. Um, subscribe, share this shit around. Share anything I post. Share it all. Share it everywhere. Get on somebody else's Facebook account. Share it all over there, too. Go check out DreadFun. YouTube.com forward slash DreadFun and DreadFun.com. Also check out Richard at his blog. Uh, It's spelt wrong, so I have the link underneath the video. Um, It's too long anyway. Yeah, and that boy is just a fucking rambling about everything. (laughs) 